Hi everyone, this video we are going to be finishing up our week 6 activity. So I'm going to go through and do a couple more of the problems that we couldn't quite get to in class. And then I'll tell you what's left for you to do. So you can find this on Lumen. Uh, and the directions for what you need to finish still will also be on Lumen attached to the weekly activity right next to this sheet. So we finished class. Um, for me today, for you, some time in the past, we finished class with this. We had picked out a null and alternative hypotheses for one of the questions that we asked about the daily cell phone use of DCC students. So what we did is we used this, um, this article and we saw that it, it's, uh, that it said that on average college students spend, spend nine hours on their phone a day. So that's what we put. The average that we are going to to claim for DCC students, remember we're interested in DCC students here, right? So the average we're going to claim for DCC students is nine hours. Our goal is to use our sample to try to understand this, to see if this fits or not, okay? And so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do this in just a little bit. The first thing I want to do though is just finish this problem because we should also set up hypotheses for the other question. And so you have some freedom here. I'm going to set up some hypotheses here for one of these questions, but you can do a little different. If you, if you want to use a different version of a question, that's fine. So specifically, uh, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to try to answer the question what's going on what percentage of DCC students believe they're addicted to their cell phone and I'm gonna compare that to high school students so just for me you can use this if you want to up to you from high school students so again if you want to use the same thing I'm gonna use go for it that's fine um, you're gonna to have to do the work on this one but I'll show you how to set things up. So if you want to do that, awesome. If you want to find your own group, if you want to compare, try to see if you can find this number, this claimed num proportion for all college students or you know all adults or some other group, go for it. But I'm just gonna try to look up high school students and use that. So I did that, I did a little searching and what I found was this article. And we're going to have to talk about finding valid sources and making sure that the places we're going, um, you know, are, are good places to go. And when we read something, is this a trustworthy source? So things we'll talk about a little bit later survey methodology. You can see some of the important words here. You can see sample sizes, some neat things, some information we'll talk about later. Uh, but what really we're interested in is trying to see if this has an assumption that I can use about the percentage of high school students who are addicted or believe they're addicted to their cell phone. So if you scroll through and you read through here, you'll see this. One out of every two teens feels addicted to his or her device. Okay, so there you go. That's one out of every two. That's 50%. So they're claiming here 50% feel addicted to their device. So we go down and we say, okay, that's what we're going to use as our claim. So our null hypothesis is the percentage of DCC students that feel or believe they're addicted to their cell phone is 50%. So I'm getting that 50% because I'm interested to know if it's different than high school. So I'm going to put what I believe is the high school number and we're going to see if our statistic fits that picture or not. That's what the work you're going to do. My alternative hypothesis, well, let's go back up. So did I say I think that college students should be more, less, or I don't know? I just said the word differ, so that would mean I put not equal to. But if you have a really strong feeling that you think college students 
would be more or less addicted, or at least believe they are, you can do you can use that. All you'd have to then do is change your symbol. If you think college students should be more or believe they'd, they're more addicted, you could put greater. If you think less, you can put less than. But I just said differ, so I'm going to leave it as not equal to 0 0.50. So you could do those options. So these are other options. But, you know, I'm just going to leave not equal to because I don't really know. It's been too long for me to since I've been either. So I, I'm too out of touch to have any idea. So I'm just going to use what this resource tells me, and, and I'll see what our data gives us. So there you go. There are hypotheses all set up. So then what I'm going to do is what we would have done as class is we would have used this applet to actually dig in here. Now, I'm going to go through this with you so we can get a feel for this applet. Okay. Then you're going to apply similar ideas, conclusions, make a distribution, all that, with this hypothesis in problems 11, 12, and 13. Okay. So I'm going to open this up. Let's get into it. All right, so here I am. I'm up. So this applet is different than the one proportion applet. This is the reason I'm doing it with you. So a couple things to kind of think about here. The one proportion applet, there was one population parameter you had to put in, right? You just, boom, you put it in. So here, we got to be careful. There are actually two population parameters for quantitative data. There's a mean which we're used to average, but then also because the population of all DCC students, I can grab quantitative data from each of them, I can do a mean and a standard deviation. And so there's actually two boxes to fill in here for the population. Now, we said nine hours here, okay? But wait, what about the standard deviation of the population? So I don't know. We have to go look. So we go look. Let's go back to this site and see if it tells us any of that information. This just said it was the nine hours because I smushed eight and not ten together. But if you read through this, you're not going to actually see any of the actual data here. They don't have any claims about the standard deviation for this. So what do we do when we're dealing with a quantitative variable? We're dealing with mu as our parameter. We have a guess for the mean of the whole big population, 9 hours, but we don't have a guess for its standard deviation. This is what makes quantitative trickier. This is why I was holding off on the quantitative for a little while, right? This is why I only had you doing proportions in the applet. Because not only do you have to pick out in proportion, all you got to do is pick out this one parameter value. For a mean, for mu, you've got to pick out the mean. That's the parameter value, the main one. But you've also, you should know, if you can, the standard deviation of the whole population. But quite often, you will not know this. It's just as hard to know that as it is to know the actual mean. So that's a problem. Having two big unknowns is an issue. And that makes it, things a little bit more difficult on us. But don't worry, we can figure it out. So the way that we're going to do this is we are going to estimate this number using our standard deviation from our data. So what does that mean? Well, what's my best guess for the spread? Well, it's got to be my spread. It's got to be the spread that I got from my data. Okay, so 2.371. That's my best guess on how hours spent on your phone, that data, is spread out. Now, do I actually think the population has this standard deviation? I really don't have any idea, but it's the best I can do. It's the best guess we have. So 2.371 is going to go into this box. Okay. The next thing we have to do is tell the computer, all right, computer, what's my population going to look like? 
If I go ask every single DCC student, I get the whole big population, will the hours be normally distributed? Will they be skewed right? We haven't talked about uniform. There's a complete other distribution that we could use here, which we're not going to talk about, but there's actually a ton of different shapes that the population could be. Now this is tricky. We're not really sure what it's going to be. Again, we have to pull from our data. Let's look at our data. What's the picture? It's right skewed. It looks right skewed. So our data was right skewed. So what we're going to do is say, okay, that's believable for the whole population. So hopefully you're getting an idea why I've been hiding this from you for so long. It's not, you know, it's totally doable. It's just there's a lot more that goes into it. Right, so we're having the computer take samples from this population. It's much harder to set this up than to tell the computer, flip a fair coin. Like that's easy, right? Flip a fair coin computer. And the computer's like, oh, okay, I can do that. Here, it's not flip a fair coin. It's draw numbers from a population with this mean, this spread, and this shape. It's a lot tougher. It's totally doable and we'll see how you know we can do it but there's a lot more going on and that's why we've kind of waited on this now the sampling actually works pretty similarly number of samples give me a thousand I like that picture what's my sample size well we had 16 total people who responded to the survey I hit draw samples gotta be a little careful here it's a little tricky when you when you jump into this one it looks like this is the picture, but hopefully you're looking at this like, what? That's not the picture. Because that says most recent sample. It's just showing you the last time the computer grabbed 16 people from this population. The last time it did it, grab 16. It's showing you what that looked like. What you need is to go over here and then, hey, that's a picture we're used to. Look at that. So that picture is one that we're pretty used to. What's the middle? Nine. That's the null hypothesis you said. Of course that's the middle. We know that that's what it should be. Okay. And so this is our distribution. So let's grab this. Let's grab this distribution. Let's, let's bring it to our picture. So that would be here. I'll paste in the other picture too because I already forgot about it. So don't be me. Pay attention to what I'm asking you. Let me make this a lot smaller. Get down there. Okay. And then give myself some space. Okay, so that's my distribution of samples. Now, we set up the population, so I'm going to quickly just go back to that because I asked for that as well. So here's my population. This is what I'm guessing, if it's really, really true that DCC students are on their phone an average of nine hours a day, this is what the population data, I believe, will look like. So this is our best guess at that. So paste this in. Again, ginormous, but we can make it smaller. There we go. And we'll give ourselves some extra space here. There we go. So there's our population. Okay. Okay, now we did a bunch of samples and got this sample distribution. All right. Now, number nine says, use the 2SD method to see if our statistic is usual or unusual. Okay, so let's do it. 2SD method, nothing changes here, exactly like you know how to do it. 2SD, take the mean, plus two times standard deviation, Oops, that's a D, not a B. All right, 9.007 plus 2 times 0 0.588. Okay, so we do this calculation. Let's see what happens. Do, 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 here we go. 9.007 plus 2 times 0 0.588. That gives me. 10.183. So that'll be my top end. And uh, you know, you can look kind of quick at this. 
yeah, you know, that, that seems like a it's about right. Just kind of on the picture, trying to figure out where that looks like. And then do the other one, mean minus 2SD. OK. So we just flip to a minus sign. I'll write it all out so you can see it. Minus 2 times the standard deviation. 7.831. So again, eyeballing it, 7.831, you know, let's maybe over here somewhere. Okay, so this ends up being my middle 95%. It's my middle 95, and that's my usual. Remember, anything outside is unusual. Unusual, unusual. Okay. All right. So then we got to bring our statistic back into it. What what was our statistic? Do, 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 do. X bar was 3.197 hours. So here we go. My X bar was 3.197 hours. So how does that compare to the picture? Well, we're like way over here. Three. If we continued this out. So this is very unusual. We're way off the charts. So just right away, we're thinking, based on based on my statistic, it seems very unlikely that DCC students are spending nine hours a day on their phone. Now, we've got a lot of things we have to talk about uh, in terms of, is that really a good conclusion for us to make? So I'll just put to the side here a couple of things for you to think about. First of all, is our sample representative? I want to learn about all DCC students. Did I do a good job getting a representative sample? Well, first of all, I only asked students in my stats class. So that's step one is, you know, are stats students going to be representative of all students in terms of phone usage? Is it possible that the DCC stats students are less likely to use their phone as much as a general student? Maybe they're more likely. Maybe it's the same, but that's something that you have to think about. Is my sample representative? Um, there's a couple other kind of things that we can think about, like, you know, is the nine hours even trustworthy? We just grabbed this from some website. Now, of course, it was Baylor's, Baylor University's website. But still, it's worth going and finding their actual paper, seeing how they collected the data, and seeing if you can find other sources that uh, back up this nine hours. So there's lots of things to really think about here. But overall, being so far away from this, it makes us think, hmm, maybe we should investigate this more. Let's figure out what's going on. Let's see you know, if this, if this number really is very far away from nine. And if it is, and if we really are different than uh, other schools, other, other college students, if we really are that different, why? What are the reasons? And how can we explore that and understand that? So that, all that extra stuff I just said, that's for the beyond, the after. Uh, we, that's not, in this class, we won't kind of double back like that and dive deep because then we'd have to go into other fields of study. But that's the kind of way you can think about it. All right, and so conclusion. Okay, in our, our little note document and examples that we did in class today, again, today being the 23rd for me, maybe not for you. So in that document, we wrote out our two, our, our nice two little, what do I say in conclusions? And so remember, if we end up with an unusual statistic, Here's what we're going to do. If we end up with an unusual statistic, we can immediately just say, without exception, just say, 
we have evidence for or supporting the alternative hypothesis. But remember, so you can just write that down. Don't even think about it. Write it down. Then you got to go to context. That's there you go. That's how you spell it. So then you got to go to context. You got to put it into context. So what does that mean? It means in terms of this problem, what the heck are we even talking about? What's the alternative hypothesis? What do you mean? Well, go back up. The alternative alternative hypothesis was that the average uh, the average number of hours DCC students spend on their cell phones a day is not nine hours. Plop it in. Ready? We have evidence that the average number of hours DCC students spend on their phone each day is not, that's where the not equal to sign comes in, nine hours. From this, you might go, yeah, uh, you know, it really looks like it's less, like a lot less. Well, that's what you could do next if you want, right? That's what you could do next is you could say, okay, I, I do think it's a lot less. Why don't I try to get a bigger sample, make sure it's representative, try to do a better job making sure it's representative and maybe get a slightly bigger sample. And then I'm gonna change up my alternative hypothesis to less than. And maybe I even adjust the nine hours. If I find other sources that claim different numbers, I can try that as well. So it's, it's almost like a game. You just you try something, you see what it says, and then you try to adapt it. You learn, you do a little bit better, see what that says, and then you keep going, you keep going, you keep going. Get better and better each time. So there you go, you've got it. So hopefully that helps kind of see the full picture of this and then use that applet a little bit better. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to, on your own, for the rest of the problems, focus on this, the proportion of DCC students who believe they are addicted to their cell phone. There you go, right here. You've got your hypotheses. Go to the applet, run a simulation, Put in your hypotheses, put in your sample size, 16. Give me your distribution. Give you some space. Use the 2SD method to compare our statistic. Let's scroll back up. Our statistic was five yeses out of 16 for 31%. So use that. Go find that on your, uh, on your picture. Use the 2SD method to see if it's usual or unusual. Write a conclusion. Let me know if you need help. That's what you have left to do, 11, 12, 13. I've hit everything else, or we've hit everything else in class together. So keep up the good work. Let me know if you have any questions.